Okay, this is the slime experiment, one of my favourites. Now, what's really interesting when I was researching this, there's tons of different recipes for slime. In fact, I bought a whole book full of slime recipes, would you believe? And I tried most of them as well, great fun. But I wanted to show you a recipe that I think is probably the simplest. And I hope you'll agree, it doesn't actually require very much. Although around on the table it looks like I've got loads of stuff, I haven't. I've tried to simplify it a bit so I can show you it in one go. But you may not need all the containers I'm going to show you. You could just wash them out and reuse them. You'll see what I mean as we go. First of all, let me tell you the important things you need to get hold of. Apart from some containers to measure with, and these are all in front of you anyway. You need two substances in particular for this, and that's all two. This slime recipe is pretty simple. You need some borax in this white powder here. Now, borax um, is technical name. It's called sodium tetraborate decahydrate. I want you to write it out a hundred times, you'll remember it. Actually, you don't need to remember it because normally its trade name is borax, okay? So if you go into a shop and ask for it, that's what you say, can I have some borax, please? Places they sell this, sometimes you can get it from hardware store, stores, chemists, drug stores, that sort of place, they'll sell it. And if they don't sell it, many shops are happy enough to get it for you as well. So borax is its common name. It's been around a real long time, actually. It's a household cleaner, a general household cleaner. It goes back to Victorian times. In fact, in Victorian times, women used to use it to wash their hair. I think they used to put egg yolk in it. Anyway, we're not gonna wash our hair today with it. We're gonna use it to make slime. So borax powder. Up. You also need some white PVA glue, the washable version, okay? So washable PVA glue is the stuff we want. You can get PVA glue which is not washable, which has got all sorts of chemicals in it. We want the ordinary plain washable PVA glue. You'll be pleased to know it's the cheapest one as well, usually. Schools have this stuff all over the place, particularly primary schools, secondary schools. Ask the art department, they'll, they'll have some because artists use it as well. We do need some water, so I suppose that's the third substance really, but that's easy to get hold of, isn't it? First of all, we need to mix some borax in a particular way. What I want you to do is make a saturated solution. Now, a saturated solution is a solution where we put so much stuff in that we can't dissolve anymore and it collects in the bottom. So that's saturated. Think about if someone says, oh, I've been out in the rain, I'm saturated. It normally means you've got water dripping out of your clothes, you've got so much there. Same thing in a chemical uh, mix here, if we're gonna put a solution here where we're going to get the borax. Now you can see in this jug, I hope, and if you can't see, I'm going to tell you, we've got 250 millilitres of water. So 250 millilitres, okay? I've used slightly warm water because it just mixes more easily when it's slightly warm. But you'll be okay with cold, but I do recommend slightly warm. For that sort of amount, 250 millilitres, what I recommend is a big heap spoon, tablespoon of borax powder. Okay, so borax powder, big heat tablespoon. To be honest, you can't put too much in a way, in a way because once you become saturated, what, what'll end up, what you'll end up with is powder on the bottom of the container anyway. And that's fine, because we're not gonna be using that. What we want is the actual solution itself. And I'm gonna leave that just over there for a minute. Okay, now give it a good stir. Okay, now you need to stir it like this. Just for a minute or so. and we need a bottle to pour it into. Now I recommend anything more than about 500 ml be fine, 500 to a litre. Doesn't have to be exact. I'm actually gonna use this bottle here. This is a rather peculiar size. I think it's more than 500 actually. Okay. Now stir it so that as far as you can see, it goes a bit cloudy. As far as you can see, most of the powder is dissolving away. Of course it can't all be dissolving away into the water, otherwise we wouldn't be able to see what we can see now. It's a bit cloudy, isn't it? Anyway, what I want you then to do, or this racket, is pour this into your bottle. Okay, so pour it in. Now, what I want you to also do is make sure the powder goes in as well. So you might have a bit of a sludge like I've got here. Just put your fingers in, it's safe enough. Just put your fingers in and pull it through. By the way, some people have detergent allergies. If you've got a detergent allergy, I'd probably suggest you wear a kitchen glass for this experiment when you're handling this stuff. Okay, so that'll do. And I'm gonna put that over there. Now, wipe my hands a bit, excuse me. Now you know what we've got lab coats for. And I'm gonna put the lid on. 
And now I want to mix it. And the best way, to be honest, <coughs> is to give it a good shake. And what you need to do is give it a good shake for at least two or three minutes. A really aggressive, good old shake. So make sure the lid's on properly, of course. Give it a good shake. Now, I'm not going to do this for two or three minutes. I don't have time right now. So make sure you get a good shake for two or three minutes. Good bit of a workout. Once you're happy, you've given it a good shake for two or three minutes or you're exhausted, put it down somewhere and leave it probably for a good 15 to 20 minutes because what we want it to do is to clear a little bit. What's going to happen is if you've made a saturated solution in the way I've asked you to, which I'm sure you will have done, the extra powder that we put in will fall out of solution and fall out and end up in the bottom of the bottle as a little powdery pile at the bottom. But we need to give that a bit of time. It's already starting, but we want it to get it a bit more clear than it is now. So keeping it out of the way for 15, 20 minutes is the way to go. Guess what? We've done one already. So here we see, that's what I did earlier. It's not totally clear, as you can see, but I'm wondering whether how easy you can see here. Look, there is a powdery substance in the bottom, so it's cleared quite well. And we're going to be using that in a minute. First of all, though, I want to do a bit of mixing with the glue. So here we have some glue. I've put this lid on the top only because I've had it in there for a few minutes, so I don't want it to start drying out, so I've just put a lid on. If you're going to do this in one go, you don't need to do that. Now, I've got 75 millilitres of glue in here, 75 mils of glue. You probably can't see that on there, but that's how much I've got in there. What I want you to do is have 75 millilitres of water as well, okay? So, 75 ml of water. Now, how much you actually will need when you do this might vary a tiny bit because it actually does depend a bit on the type of glue you use or in particular the maker of glue where the manufacturer comes from who made the glue you're using. Now the particular glue I'm using today, I noticed the other day that I needed a little bit more water than the half and half mix I've got here to make sure it worked in the way I wanted to. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit more and funny enough I'm actually giving you an idea about a variable here already and I'm only going to add a teeny bit more to bring it up to about 90 mil. Okay, I just noticed it went a bit better. Okay, so remember when you do this, first off, do 50 50, so 75 mil, 75 mil, see what happens for you. What I need to do is to pour the water into the glue and mix it. Now you've got to remember that glue, PVA glue in particular, the one we're using, is water soluble. Remember, it's washable PVA glue, that's the one we want to use. And there's already water in it, but we're just adding water now, making it even more runny. So in a way, we're just diluting the glue, making it more runny than it was before. And of course, when manufacturers make glue, they obviously put in the amount of water they think it needs to become a good glue. So we're just changing it a bit by adding more water. But otherwise, the same chemicals are in there, the PVA bit, which stands for polyvinyl acetate, by the way. PVA, that's pretty much the same. So we're going to keep that going just for a minute or two, give it a good stir. You want to make sure that the water mixing with the glue is good, well as possible. I'm using, as you see, a lolly stick here. It was nice getting hold of that, I can tell you. And you want to make sure you scrape all the edges of the container you're using, make sure there's no glue stuck anywhere. So make sure you rub it right around the outsides and get into all the cracks and edges and corners the container. I've spilt a bit on my table, but never mind. Until it looks more like milk. So it's actually looking quite good now. I think that'll probably work. Now, of course, we are making a bit of mess. So I'm going to get a bit of tissue out of my pocket. I'm going to wipe the table while I'm at it. And I want to get this out of the way. I'm going to be using this again in a minute, actually. Which I don't think I will. I need to write one, actually. And I shall put that here so I don't make too much mess. So, we've made a mix, when you do this, half glue, half water, 75 mil glue, 75 mil water, okay? And I'm gonna pour that into this jug. Okay, so pretty good stuff so far. And hardly any left in here, so that's good. We did a good mix. If you don't mix it properly, you'll find you'll have some glue still left in here, so that's not too bad. 
things like that. Right, now what we want to do, final thing, is use some of this stuff, our borax solution. So what I'm actually gonna do is pour 50 milliliters into here, okay? 50 milliliters. Now, to help you remember the mix we had here, if you've done it as I'd asked you to do, 75 mil glue, 75 mil water, that's 150 milliliters if you've done it in that way. We're only gonna use 50 of this. So think of the relationship, 150 here, 50 of that. If we were doing a cookery lesson, we'd say that's three parts to one part borax, okay? Because three times 50 is 150. So three parts PVA water mix to one part borax solution. That's what I recommend you try first off, okay? So, notice, as I told you before, most of the powder has settled out now. So I'm gonna move that just to the side and I'm gonna pour into here. I need to turn this around so I can have a look at it. I'm gonna pour in 50 mil. Now I'm gonna pour it slowly because if I pour it too quick, all the sludge will come up out of the bottom and I don't want the sludge. I just want the liquid as clear as I can keep it. Okay, that's not too bad. So 50 mil. Okay. And don't worry if you spill it, it's a cleaner. So let's have a look. Yeah, that's not too bad. Right, now what I want you to do, here's where you start getting interesting with this one. You're gonna get your stirring gadget. Let's take this again. And what I want you to do is to start stirring and keep stirring. And while you're stirring, slowly pour in this. Now I'm gonna do it with you right now. And I'm gonna take you through this. So slowly, slowly, slowly. Mm, something strange is happening in here. Well, to be honest, this isn't really very useful anymore as a mixer, is it? in a bit rubbish, so I think I'm going to take that off. A little bit slimy and disgusting. And then I'm going to get my hands in. And what I want you to do is do this, squidge it through your fingers, pretty disgusting, for two or three minutes and see what happens. So hopefully you found exactly like I did it. It started off pretty squidgy and slimy and disgusting, and now it's actually going more solid, which is weird. And, which is an added benefit, you can clear your container with it, which that's a good clue to know, by the way, that it's about right. Because if you can mop up the container, like I'm doing, and get all the sludge out, it saves you washing up later, doesn't it? So you can clear it out now. And I'm pretty happy with this stuff. And of course, you can clean the container. As long as you keep it moving, you can clean your hand as well. So, get, somebody comes off a bit. Now, keep it moving, keep it moving. Doesn't look much like slime to you, possibly. Okay, but certainly a bit gooey. Watch what happens when I stop. Now I like this particular way of doing slime because it's not too runny, it doesn't suddenly flow out of your fingers. I think it goes fast enough to look pretty disgusting, but it doesn't go too fast. And that's why I like making it with those mixes. And remember, all we used here was glue and borax and water just mixed together. Pretty simple materials to get hold of, not expensive, and you get a fantastic slime. I'm sure you can think of all sorts of things to do with this. We'll have a chat about what's going on next. So, what's going on? How can you mix together liquids and end up with something like this? Well, first of all, remember, actually, it is still a liquid. It's flowing, albeit rather slowly. But let's think about a couple of interesting things. Think of the glue first. Well, before we even think of the glue, we've got to remember that just about everything around you is made of atoms and molecules, okay? Now, glue, PVA glue, is made up of lots and lots of very long chains of molecules, lots of particles stuck together in little chains, okay? And there's millions of them in a blob of 
PVA glue, but they're all flowing around each other. Although they are quite long, if we had a powerful, powerful microscope, no, not, we could see them, but they're all moving around each other, sliding past each other, and that's why the glue flows. And of course, there's water in there as well, in the glue itself, which allows them to move. These little chains of molecules will move around each other. When you squirt and mix in, some borax solution, what seems to happen is those tiny particles of borax, what happens is they get in between all those chains that I described in the PVA, those PVA chains if you like, and start linking them together in a tangled sort of mess. They link them together and start gripping them together, some grip in one direction, some grip in another, and they become more of a solid mass. And of course at the same time, maybe we had water in there, we added even more water, as they start linking together, these little polymer chains, that's what we call them, these little polymer chains, they start trapping water in there as well. So the borax is actually allowing them to do this. The borax is getting it up inside of those little polymer chains of molecules, causing them to start gripping each other more firmly and linked together and trapping water at the same time. And you end up with a material like this. Now one of the names we give to the atoms and molecules that you get in this experiment is called elastomer and elastomer. Now think of the word elastomer, what does that remind you of? Elastic bands, when they can see where the name comes from. It's stretchy, we can change its shape a bit and it'll go back to the same shape again. We can do that with this, we can sort of, because you can see as I'm doing it, look, it's sort of a bit stretchy. This particular one, because there's so much water in it, it still flows a bit. So it's still a liquid, it's still flowing, as you can see, wandering around here. But as soon as you stop, starts flowing in this rather more disgusting, slimy fashion. And one of the reasons it looks so slimy is because of all the water. It's glistening with all the water that's been trapped in there. So that's, in my opinion, one of the best slime recipes because it's so simple. So, what other things could we change to see what's going on? Well, I've already given you some hints with that, with the measurements we were using earlier. I suggested to you, when you first do this, use 75ml glue, 75ml water, mix it together, and add 50 millilitres of borax solution. Of course, you could change those measurements, couldn't you? But whatever you change, remember there's three things there straight away, whatever one you change, make sure you keep the other two the same rather than change everything. You should only change one thing at a time, see if it has any effect. Otherwise, how do you know why it's doing something different if you change more than one thing? That's what fair testing is all about. What about, you remember, oops, when you made the uh, borax solution, we made a saturated solution, didn't we? Oh, I'm going to start getting a bit sticky with this stuff now, aren't I? We made a saturated solution. How about trying borax which is not saturated? So in other words, don't put so much powder in the water when you first mix it up. That's another thing you could do. What about colour? Because this is white. Oh, I quite like it white. I must be honest, I love it. But of course some of you I know would much rather see this some of the more interesting colour like green possibly. Oh, I think green would look great actually. If you're going to do that, can I just suggest where you put it? Put the glue and the colour together. So put the glue and the colour together. So in other words, if you've got a, bo a bottle of PVA glue, perhaps measure out say in this one you're 75 mil, pour in your colour in straight into the glue before you do anything else. So use coloured glue in other words and I think you're going to find that's the best way. So you could try different colours, that would be quite fun wouldn't it? I wonder what other things you could try. I'll leave you to think about that one. Mm -hmm.